How do we start this? Um, How does one start this? Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Please excuse my lack of voice. I've got Brennan here. Hello, everyone. Come on, I'm sure you recognize him. Brennan is one of the head chefs on Moody or Arians. I have roped him in <laughs> to yeah, do a definitely. Yacht Chef Q&A. because a bunch of you guys comment a whole load of questions and I would love to dedicate this video to answering <laughs> those questions. First one is, and you're gonna right. love this, average wage per month for, for a chef. Oh, that's so drastic between 20 meter to 140 meter. Starting out salary on a 30 meter as a sole chef. I think you're gonna talk like five. Yeah, five, five and a half. Five K a month. You're gonna get 60 days off a year. All right, what about a head chef on like a hundred meter yacht? I don't know, some of those can be cheap and cheerful as well. <laughs> you're, over, you're well over 10, I think. You're, you're probably over 10 with rotation. Yeah. With rotation meaning? Time for time. Yeah, eight, you weeks, work eight on, weeks on, 10 weeks on. Eight weeks off. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. So many people ask this question, Brennan. So Let's many people. What happens to the leftovers? What happens to the leftovers? Now there's two types of leftovers. Yes. There's guest leftovers. Amen. And then there's crew leftovers. So start with the guest. Guests go straight down the crew. Yeah. Unless there's a lot that you can do something with, mm -hmm. like separately, but usually it just goes right to the crew. Yeah. There's temperature danger zone things going <laughs> on as well, so we have to be careful. We have to be careful about it. Sick. But if there is a chance, maybe you've only used like half a fillet. You braise a whole brisket or slow roast a whole brisket, there's like, eh. yeah. Yeah, the, the crew eat pretty well on charter and they, and they should because like they're working crazy they hours. Do. If there's a little bit of caviar left over in the pot, <laughs> caviar scrambled eggs for the crew. Uh, crew leftovers, they, from the meal, they get tubbed up, put in the fridge. Yep. A lot of people will have them as like an afternoon tea snack mm -hmm. or like a midnight snack. People have different eating patterns, so there's always food in the fridge for them. And then after 24 hours, it gets. Unless we take it back and rework it. Yeah. If it's like a roast chicken or something that can be easily changed into like a chicken salad, you yeah. know. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Thank you. Uh, ever had a picky crew member that only eats simple food? Oh, yeah. And usually they are the engineers. engineers. Meat and potatoes. They're simple folk because their work is complicated. Is that an insult? That's a broad generalization we just made. There's also some foodie engineers, but I've also had an engineer said he wouldn't even eat food. He'd just take a pill if he could. This is from Will, Captain Will. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hi, Will. <laughs> Who shaves more, Brennan his head or Nina her legs? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I nair, I nair my head. You nair it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, who is the better chef? Obviously, Brennan, he's been doing this a heck of a lot longer than I me. I would hope so, just because of how yeah. long you've been doing it. Imagine if I was worse. Be sad. <laughs> <laughs> who washes the dishes, pots, pans? Okay, this is true. If it's from the kitchen, if it's from the galley, oh, yeah. Brennan washes yeah. it. If it's the plates that the food gets served on the guests or the crew to, then the yeah. interior team wash those dishes. So it's kind of a shared load. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We don't, it's like front of the house, back of the house. Like there's a line. And there it is. It, it, yeah. Naughty Styles actually asked me this question quite a while ago. I'm sorry I haven't answered it yet. Um, how do you keep your veggies fresh? Uh, I know for me straight away, I like to keep everything really dry. So even if a box of lettuce comes in, I'm straight in there with paper towel, wiping out any condensation. I'm wrapping my herbs in paper towel. I'm making sure my fridge has really good airflow, so nothing's like squished the sides. Containers. Containers. But yeah, the containers are important. And this goes back to like a bigger boat too. You're gonna have a bigger walk-in, so you're gonna have more space, which means your stuff can breathe. I remember like in the Soul Chef days and the smaller boats, you're just jamming everything into a home kitchen. <laughs> yeah. That shit doesn't last. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. No, like home fridges are not professional kid fridges. No, no. So. So basically just get a better fridge. I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I had to keep stuff fresh, it's hard. What happens if the charter guest demands something and you don't have it on board? You do everything you possibly can to go and get it. Yeah, and if you can't get it, you give a good reason. Yeah, as long as you are going out of your way to try and, to go try and get it. And present options, like this is how much it'll be to fly it in. We could this do this instead. Yeah, it'll take yeah. 24 hours. You basically do not want to say no. No. But. And there's resources on land that can help us procure these. Shout requests. out to all the amazing yacht agents out there. Shout I mean, out to all the provisioners. Yacht agents sometimes you help, but you <laughs> charge too much. So, what is your favorite chefy tool aside from your knives? Mm. 
The knives are very important. Knives are very important. Oh, it's a tough one. Thermomix. <laughs> you know that the, the I have a fish, like a fish slice. Okay. Which yeah. I really love. Well, tweet. I'm gonna start using chopsticks. Chopsticks after, like, dinner the other night. But speaking of knives, I do want to shout out. This video is kindly sponsored by Kami Kodo Knives. If you've been watching my channel for a while, almost a year ago, Kami Kodo sent me a box of knives to try out. I have been putting them to the test since. They have flown over all over the world with me. I, they actually have a permanent spot in my knife roll. I genuinely love using these knives. Kami Kodo used Japanese steel and a 19 step process to perfect their knives. I personally enjoy using them because they are so insanely sharp. I actually haven't needed to get out the whetstone yet. Really? I've honed. Yeah. But I haven't had to. You're a good honer. Pretty awesome. But also another thing I love, and I don't know if this is because I'm a girl, I just love the handle. The handle when you're holding onto something for a long time in a kitchen that's heavy, they have a really comfortable ergonomic handle. So that's a personal little perk for me. In the Kampiki knife set is that beautiful wooden box that I got. My favorite knife is the Nakiri. It's a vegetable knife. It's an absolute beast. Like it's a big knife. It's a real workhorse. I like to use it for my crew food. It can really handle big amounts of cooking. Kami Kodo is currently running a massive Labor Day sale and they are offering my viewers an extra 50 USD off any purchase with the discount code CREWCHEF on top of their special offers. Go to kamikodo.com forward slash the crew chef to get your knives and help support my channel. Now, recently I was temping on a boat where I was the only chef on board. It was just crew on, but someone said, is it common that one chef does all the cooking, cleaning, and the accounting and provisioning. As a sole chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as a sole chef, yeah. I would say a vessel up to the size of kind of 55 meters yeah. just has one yeah. chef. You've been a sole chef, I've been a sole chef. Uh, is Brennan as huggable as he looks? Hmm, I don't know how I feel about that question. <laughs> what is the most adverse environment slash equipment malfunction that you've ever had on board and still Ooh. had to cook in? When the dishwasher is down, it's hell on earth. That happens a lot, and, and the NGOs come in because they know how important it is. It like is they're, yeah. they're on their bellies, like holding it out. Like the just, guts of the dishwasher, oh, like, oh, water spraying in it's people's faces. <laughs> Climate, for me, I worked on an Amels where the air conditioning broke one day, and we were in Cabo San Lucas, <laughs> and it was literally 42 oh. degrees in the galley. <laughs> Celsius, 42 degrees Celsius. <laughs> it was a situation. My God, I was hot. But Plus side, my bread dough proves really quickly, so. Oh yeah. yeah. People are struggling with the concept of weekend food for crew. Uh-huh. Yeah, They're like, do you heat it up for them? What's the deal? It's like, no, we just leave it in the fridge and they help themselves. Yeah, I think when you have like a rotational chef, then there's probably not gonna be weekend food. The, the chef will be preparing hot food. Yeah. Uh, and that differs from program to program, but if the chef is not rotational. And the chef gets weekends off. Yeah, then, then weekend food, which is tricky because it's either on a Friday, then the chefs are like, well, we still got to do the same amount of work plus cook food for two days. Uh, it just, and a lot of times we get surprised with weekend food where we, we, we won't know that we're going to get a day off. And then I'll be like, oh, we got or two days off. off. Can you make some food for the crew and put it in the fridge? <laughs> yeah. Or the best is like <laughs> crew is knocking off at 12 and you weren't even told that it's a half day <laughs> and two days off. And you're like, oh, cheers. I'll be working until now. Okay, cool. Um, loads of y'all have movie theaters. Arians has a movie theater. Oh, yeah. And someone asked, do we make popcorn on board? And how do we make it taste like the movie theater popcorn? Oh, uh, we cook it on a stove top. Yeah. And then popcorn. I actually like to put cheese powder on it. Oh, yeah. Like powdered yeah. cheese because it, it kind of lets that cheesy butteriness to it as well. Parmesan. Or, or let's be real, we're on a yacht, we're going to use truffle salt. Come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> I like Parmesan uh, truffle oil and chives. Also, Ooh. Uh, Short but sweet. Do you use a rice cooker? Yes. Yes. Every sushi place, every, yes, everyone does. Rice cookers are the best, guys. Yeah. Get one. Um, oh, <laughs> controversial subject. Bring it. If the chef isn't cooking on the weekends, are the crew allowed to come into the kitchen and cook for themselves? Controversial. I would, it depends on the crew. I Oof. would say generally no. Generally no. But Mikey, the chief engineer, cooked some poached eggs as we were just talking about. Okay, well. But it's a chief, you know? It's like, yeah, it is, I know. It Actually, to be fair, I've had captains that go in and make yeah. themselves scrambled eggs. Eggs, yes. Yeah. People will come in, make themselves breakfast, but they're not going to come in and whip up like a lasagna or anything like that. I've done cooking lessons on crossings. That's cool. Fun. That's really cool. Oh, this is a cute one. Do you take your meals the same time as the rest of the crew or do you just gobble when you can? 
Oh, truth hurts. The truth hurts, guys. We just yep. gobble where we can. Yeah, especially when there's guests on. When there's guests off, you're going to come in at the tail end of the uh, crew service. Uh, but a lot of times we eat out of the smallest stainless steel bowl that resembles a dog bowl. It's a dog bowl, bowl actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we call it the dog bowl. It's right there. Right there oh, there's you. a spoon, and that's it. And usually you're standing, so that's sad. Which yeah. is why when we are off, we like to go to nice restaurants and sit down and be cooked for ourselves. Yeah. Do you make cakes for the crew? Yeah. Yeah. What Definitely. kind of question is that? Even on charter. Yeah. I will make a cake for the crew, but it's someone's birthday. Birthday, yeah. But yeah birth yes. All right. This is another tasty one. How much crew turnover is there in the industry? Ooh. It depends on the boat. It depends on the boat. If, if it is a shit program that <laughs> yeah. doesn't take care of the crew, doesn't pay the crew, doesn't look after the crew, then you're never going to keep them. People will leave, I would say. Uh, yeah. On some boats, they have really bad crew turnover. And when you are interviewing for a position there, you think, hang on, what crew leaving? And that can yeah. be an indicator of a boat that's not managed very well. They work their crew too hard. But then you get other boats. Crew have been on for like coming up 10 years. So. Yeah. I, I, for me, I think I've done two stints for four years on a boat in a, and I think around two or three to four years you're looking to, for something else because I like a challenge like I at, at a certain point you're like I'm not being challenged I need growth I need something more where do you get inspiration for your menus new dishes that kind of thing uh, I used to be cookbooks still is but social media helps a lot too yes. uh, Instagram is curated to food a lot of times but yeah cookbooks as well like I still love them I listen to a lot of like chef memoirs as well that helps yes, with, with, yes. So all of that for yeah. me as well yeah. But also, like, when the provisions arrive on board and I see, I'm like, yeah. oh, this is a beautiful zucchini flower or whatever. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I can get an idea from the actual food itself. Yacht or high-end restaurant, what are, like, the major differences? Ooh. And the first one for me is that restaurants are, are a business. They're designed to make money, whereas yachts are not. <laughs> Agreed. I, and my, I would, immediately I thought breakfast. <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> you don't have to do breakfast in a high-end restaurant. No, never. There you go. Yeah, so, but there's your, your point exactly true. Yeah. What is your favorite veggie meal to make for crew or guests? Falafels. Falafels? I love, if I'm cooking for crew, I like vegetarian enchiladas because a mm. lot of people don't even notice that they're vegetarian. It's all wrapped up, you're covered in sauce and cheese and oh, whatever, yeah. and then people don't actually realize. So, yeah, enchiladas. Sauce and cheese makes everything better. Sauce and cheese. Um, whether at shipyard or at sea, do you have power constraints where you can't use ovens or things like that at times? No. You don't? No. I have had that on a smaller vessel. If we were running one generator, so yeah, I wanted to use all my ovens, I wanted to end all my hot plates and everything, but the laundry was also yeah. full pelt. Yeah. It would actually cut out and the whole ship would go dead. So that Which was not, not good. not nice for crew that work. For guys. bad. <laughs> also, new crew is not blackness. <laughs> uh, professional and personal opinion of a Thermomix, are they worth it? Because you have uh, some grievances. I do. Yeah, I love them. I, lo I love the idea. I love the original because it was tactile. There was dials and buttons. Yep. I do not want to touch screen where I got to like dry my hand real quick and they break down a lot. They get used hard, but I've also seen them in really tough kitchens. They, I got nothing but good things to say with some caveats. Same as him. The, the lid on the Thermomix oh. takes way too long to open. You're like, open, it's like... It's not made for I'll us. think about it. <laughs> it's even slower than that, oh, I think. Sorry. Uh, opinions, another controversial one, opinions on crew dietaries, mm. vegans, celiacs, allergies. I think personally having someone with a severe allergy on a yacht is a dangerous situation because we could be at sea away from medical help. Um, generally yachts do not employ people with serious medical allergies. A charter guest with a, that brought a nine-year-old boy with a severe peanut allergy. Peanuts just didn't come on board anymore in terms of even peanut oil, which I used to love don't use anymore but because I've been doing this for so long over 20 years the crew allergies and preferences have now gotten to a level where they're just it's hard it's just like we're looking after guests and crew especially when, I mean, when there's no guests it's not a big deal but when there's guests you're like oh why are you even working in this industry if you need this much I know it's um it's an interesting one it oh it's texture that's fine it has fine. Texture. texture yeah so, Monaco sirens um it, if I'm on a vessel where only one person is vegan, I would then have to make like a separate mashed potatoes with no butter for them. I'd have to make a separate potato salad with vegan mayonnaise for them. So it is uh, extra work. Um, 
Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's easy to forget, and then someone's grumpy and Oh, you could you say, like, why not make all of it vegan? Well, like, not everyone wants to eat vegan, and fact, yeah. mashed potato tastes, but, tastes better with butter, so. Yeah, and then that vegan gets pushed overboard because everybody wants dairy and... <laughs> the vegan yeah. gets <laughs> I love this question. Are the guests friendly, and do you hang out sometimes? I mean, I have had guests that come into the galley they will hang out, they'll like taste things out of the pan, we'll have a chat. So yeah, some guests are super friendly and I love it. Yeah, same. It, it really makes your job easier and more fun when they're interactive and they care about food. It had the guests come in, it was kind of like a tutorial for the birthday growth. And we made with liquid nitrogen ice cream a la menu. So you can really like have cream and creme glaze. And it had all these mix-ins and then That's you put it in a mixer. Cool. And I love it, even the principal, like, one came down and did it. I taught three people and the whole Damn. 12 guests came. I loved it. Arians, as a chariot, does some cool stuff. Do you have to wear certain shoes when you are on board? Yeah, non-slip. Non-slip shoes. That's it. Yeah. I, I work in trainers. The, the days of wearing just kind of like bulletproof steel toe leather, forget it. Like even Birkenstocks, I don't understand those things. They're ugly and <laughs> painful. Uh, but everyone else loves them. I'm the weird one. I yeah. don't like Birks. Gross. I like Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even worse. Well, I work in Skechers all of a sudden, because that's what we have. I'm wearing Skechers right now. <laughs> it's hard. Uh, do you prefer private or charter? Charter. charter. Say why. Yes, but yes. Money, yes. Tips. But and also, it's like more interesting. You yeah, can impress different guests. Different and, guests. It's and, spicy and up. Over the years, like, charter has taken me to parts of food world I never would have seen before. Like, right. I, I was like, Oh, I never knew this food town existed here. And, and then you, yeah, you just learn a ton. Toot, toot. Really yeah. Since you have such an active job, do yacht management companies pay for perks such as massages, physio, or gym memberships? Uh, massages are covered under my health insurance. Health insurance. No, sorry, no, no, not massages, not massages. Cairo, Cairo. The physio is. Physio, so yeah. we all have very comprehensive health insurance that is generally part of your package on board. If you're a yacht crew and you don't have good health insurance, don't take that job. But gym membership's probably not a thing because there's a gym on board generally that you can use. I would like a spa day though. That'd be quite nice. <laughs> if my yacht management company is listening. Yeah, I mean, there's all the airborne grease in the Or gallery. a Peloton. Yeah, that would be cool. How do you cook so many poached eggs at once? Uh -oh. Have you got a video on Instagram? It was Dean. Dean did. Yeah, Dean, I think. Yeah. And it was one of those things where I've been cooking for so long, I, I didn't know how to do that. I was angry with myself, with my education, my, my spot in the world, because it's such a better world. way to do poached eggs. But basically, it's a big pot of water on the boil. He cracks all the eggs into a bowl. He makes the water like spiral and he tips them. You get the little bit as close to the surface as you can. I was like, do, 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 And do. it's just like, yeah. some of them don't make it, but not all of them make <laughs> it when you, when you poach eggs anyway. There's, a, there's, a, know, there's like, a success rate. What is your least favorite meal to cook? Straight off the bat, I don't really like cooking lasagna. I was going to go breakfast. Even though I love breakfast, on the yacht it's, it's very time consuming. It's my favorite. I forever. love breakfast. On a yacht, someone gets up at 6 a.m. and someone doesn't get out of bed till 1.30. So you have this meal that spans hours. And while you're doing that meal, you're prepping your butt off to get lunch ready. What was the longest time you spent perfecting a recipe? I don't know, years. I mean, you just. Okay, you can clearly tell Brennan's a better chef because I'm like, oh, I spent three months once trying to get this hot dog bun recipe. I think I've got it. No, I just can't think of anything in particular. Like, but uh, there's some dishes I've been pulling out. I want to do this, yeah, this coconut milk uh, tuna tartar I haven't done in a while. I, always, I did that a lot for a while. That was okay. a thing. But yeah, I don't know. It's just for years. You just yes. keep cranking just it out. It? What's your favorite dish to cook for crew? Uh, lately, because you mentioned bread. I love when I, when I mix the bread and shape it and then have it ready like in the fridge in the morning, I'm excited to get up. I, and cook that, and cook to that. see how it turns yeah, out. Yeah, because it's always it's like, this, it's like a present. Brennan has got a very cool video on sourdough, actually. If you, yeah. as a lot of people asking for sourdough recipes, head over to your channel, I'll link it below. And shout out to Chef Chalil, who's, that's whose recipe it is. And, I don't know, they love pizza. Oh, damn it, that was my, that was my cheese, answer, was pizza. I, I love cooking pizza for crew. They love it. I love getting them involved. Come, yeah. choose your toppings. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Brennan, it's the final question. Final question. Final question. <laughs> what is the weirdest animal you've ever cooked, prepared in the galley? Well, I think it's probably weirder for me than it is for you because okay. you're from south. The kangaroo, mate. Kangaroo? I, yeah, that was, that was my kangaroo. Was it? Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I had to make bat ones. You're joking. You didn't make that. No. Okay. <laughs> right, well, with that, we will wrap things up. Brennan? Hey. It's been a pleasure. It has. Thank it has been. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> If you want to see more of Brennan, he has got a YouTube channel, Olive Oil and Gasoline. He combines cooking on board Modi or Arians and his insane motorcycle adventures, which he goes on when he's not chefing. And we also go to some pretty cool restaurants together. Um, also, you go without me. Um, <laughs> but yes. they are all on there, so check out Brennan's channel. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Big thank you to Kami Kodo for sponsoring these videos. You're nice and sick. I love them. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Take care.